friends, this is Jazz, we can do another Better Force vlog, number 47, I believe. A couple of things first, though. Well, I know I don't usually apologize, you know, because really, people hate that. But I do apologize for two things. One, okay, it's only a day late, so... I'm not making an excuse for why, I'm just apologizing that it's a day late. And I also apologize if I sound off, but I, guys, don't worry, it is not the coronavirus. I have no real symptoms of it, it's seasonal allergies. My nose is really bad, I am a bit, it makes me a bit lethargic too when I have them. I know I've had that before this all went out, so don't worry, even if I was a little more sick, you can't catch it through a video. Guys who you think can? No. No. You just can't. That's just why I sound off, but I really want to get this video out to you this week anyway. Even if it is a day late. So, the first, I have two, well, two and a half. I got a vlog that has an earlier version, or a strip that has an earlier version of it. And the first strip is from August 23rd, 2016, but it was also released on August 26th. I think it's 1987, I think. So, she's like, hi, Connie. Are the girls looking forward to starting a new school? The girls are, was it Gail and Molly, her stepdaughters, said, Gail, oh, it already said her name, anyway, Gail is, she wants to get back into basketball, meet new friends, but Molly is another story. She spent the whole summer moping about her boyfriend. She thinks he's the love of her life, Ellie. She doesn't even know what love is. And Ellie's like, does anybody? Yeah, that is so true, though. When a girl, when, when people or ki when people are teenagers, it's funny. What I believe both Molly and Gail are within high school age, whether 15 through 17. So they're older teenagers. And it's funny how at that age, they think, oh, well, they're practically grown up. They know everything. Like, what love is? Oh, this person is the love of my life. But really, guys, as Ellie said, does anyone? Like, I'm 28, but then again, I do have a developmental disability. I think it's a, or is it intellect? Well, I don't know for sure. But I mean, well, just say I have a disability, right? I'm not emotionally 28. Like, I, but my point is, I don't even know what love is. Like, at least I don't think I do. I mean, what, if I were to say what love was, it would be someone who, what accepts you for, like, I mean, obviously, if you were a jerk of a person, right, and there was no reason to like a person, then no. But if you had quirks that were too, you know, like, okay, this is just an example. If someone were to, be, to have a habit of picking their nose, if someone could still love someone through that, you know, if it was if it, if it was a quirk that wouldn't harm people, right? If if they love you for your quirks, they stand up, like, like they stay by you. It, it's, uh, the funny thing is, is that a true love isn't it, it just for the sex. That's a big thing. I mean, that can be part of it, yes, if you both mutually enjoy it. But that that's just not what it is. A true love. I, I definitely know that much. I know that, like, if true love is like your best friend, too. Like, like you couldn't picture being without the other. And, I mean, no one is 100% perfect. Right? I mean, some maybe, some, some marriages might be 100% perfect, but very rare, is it? But someone who has true love, yeah, you could argue, but you'd still get, you would still be together, right? It be By the end of the day, or by the end of maybe two days, it'd all be gone and forgotten. Unless it was something truly un 
forgivable. And if it was something truly unforgivable, obviously, I, it, I wouldn't consider that true love. Like, if someone were to cheat on someone. I mean, sometimes people can make mistakes, but if someone is, like, a serial cheater, for example, well, I just say that it depends on the couple, too. If, what, if they can accept, you know, the other's infidelity. But, like, and I don't know. Like, for example, I'm not going to go into too far about their names and their personal lives, but, but not the one I live with, but my other aunt has, like, uh, my uncle. And my uncle, they're, like, my uncles were second marriage. I'm not going to get into the first one. They've been together since, maybe not married, but they've been together since before I was born. And I'm 28 years old. So... And actually, I think my uncle proposed to him on my, her on my mother's wedding day, too. So, and they have been together since. They've had their on and off arguments, but it was nothing, in my mind anyway, for what I know, serious. Just, you know, husband and wife, oh, did put something away. But literally, my uncle would do anything for my aunt, and I'm sure he would die for her. If, if there was, a, if someone, if, like, I'm just using this example, if, for those who've watched Riverdale, spoilers, I haven't watched it fully either, but spoilers, how, oh, no, no, okay, this is a bad idea, because that's not really for love, that was just to be self, being selfless, but if there was a car coming towards my aunt, I know my uncle would push her out of the way, and I don't know if the same would I, I don't know if my aunt loves him. I don't know if she would be able to push him out of the way. I don't think he'd let her. But that's my point. He would buy for her. So, and he would do anything for his family, too. Even though, in one way, his family is from her other marriage. So, it's... I, I don't know why, but I just consider him, like, I mean... I mean, I guess you never know what's going behind tools stores, but according to everything else, they they have the normal little arguments, but they're totally in love with each other. Uh, that is considered that what true love is. If someone can accept all the unharmful quirks of someone and still stay by their side, would die. I mean, maybe not everyone would die for the partner, and as long as there's a lot, there's a lot of other good. That I'm not saying they shouldn't still be together, but I know this was a weird. I know I went on a little long about this. I guess I might know more what love is than I thought. I just don't know if I would ever get it or have it, because yes, my quirks wouldn't necessarily harm people like, physically, or even really emotionally, like, I would purposely try to, but I need a lot of time by myself, right? I'm not a real sociable per people person. I need people around, but I don't need people around, so I would be concerned that I would hurt my partner if I had one by being too distant, right? They would have to absolutely understand that if it's not them, Right? Not them personally. Right? And I know that's hard. So, something that's hard to, you know, find. I've nearly lost a lot of good friends because of this quirk. And it's not that I'm meant to be a, you know, a mean person. It's just, it exhausts me emotionally. Being around that I've been talking for very long. Yeah, but I agree, though. Gail and Molly are way too young to know what true love is. I mean, okay, okay, you know what? That can still sound unfair, and maybe that she, maybe that person could have could been her true love, you know? But, I mean, they're, like, even the boyfriend is too young. The thing is with, with okay, okay, girls, can, it could happen to, too. I'm not trying to sound sex, you know, sex, you know, you know, judge mental. But a lot of guys, too, when they're in a young age, they, they, they like to experiment. And I'm not always blaming all boys. And it's not saying, oh, well, they're, they're jerks. They're all going to be, they're all jerks. I'm just saying that at that age, they haven't had enough experience. And it's better that they have experience. They get to experience before they really settle down. 
same, you know, same thing with girls too, in a way, just differently. So I think it's about time I get on to the final strip. All right, the final strip is from, I think it's March 4th, 1984. She's like, look, Loretta and Gail are here already. Yahoo! I must say that lunch with the girls was a terrific idea. Yes, I'll say. Where's Claudia? She's going to be a bit late. Is she still stating that, Ted? Yeah, he stood her up again last week. A girl like that could do better, sure. She has rescue fantasies. She's the one who needs rescuing. Ted's just like her first husband, but doesn't she... There she is! Hello, Cotty! Over here! We were just talking about you! Really, Anne? I... You know, uh... Things like that have to be private. But that's the thing with Anne. I mean, she, she, in some ways, she's a good person. Like, she's, she loves her children and everything, but she definitely has flaws. Maybe I don't want to get into too many of them. I might go over a couple as I go through this strip. But, yeah, pretty much this strip is just them talking about Kit Head and Connie's relationship when she's not there. And, yeah, if those who don't know, Connie's first husband is Peter. Now, the last name I forget, last name, but it isn't, was it Pablo, it isn't Lawrence's father. What happened is, is she met Lawrence's father before marrying Peter. Now, of course, Pablo was her first love, but not her first husband. She came back pregnant with Lawrence himself, was it Africa, or, well, whatever, so, and she fought they were going to get married. He even said, oh, well, he'll he'll be with her. But it never, it didn't happen. So, Peter was her first marriage. There were a few strips that, like, I'm trying to think. There was one strip in the newer series that made it sound like she was never married to Peter because when she said, you ever think of getting married again, you're thinking, oh, well, talking about Peter. And she's, and she's like, Pablo and I were never p married. At least I just said she was. And I'm like, wait, what about Peter? Yeah, she was married before, especially considering the older strip. She was married before, but he was awful to her and did not want to be a father. He was absolutely abusive mentally. I don't know physically so much. And he left her with almost, you know, nothing and alone. So there's to referring Ted just to be just like Peter. And how do I put this? In a way, yes, he is like Peter. I mean, I, we don't see, we never really seen, we heard about Peter, never seen him, because this was all before the strip, you know? Because that's what Lords was very little when he left. So it was before they were four or five. So it was a year before that, actually, apparently. So, so. Peter's only mentioned several times in the strip. But, I don't, and the thing is, I don't know if Peter had ever cheated on Connie, though. With Ted, he's, he is feministic, right? And one, I could only give one, say one positive thing about Ted compared to Peter. And that's only a small thing. Is that he really did sound like he wanted a kid. Well, he wanted a son, anyway. And mentioned in one strip too that is it when Connie said he always said he always said he wanted a son. Never said much, but he wanted a wife though. So he's he seemed to like Lawrence a decent chunk for a little while, anyway. So that was a little difference between them, but he is pretty much like her first husband towards her. But yeah, again, guys. I mean, you're so lucky that that Ellie noticed Connie coming. I mean, what happens if their heads were all remained turned as they were saying all this and no one saw Connie go behind them? How would have that conversation, you know, I would have really loved 
to see how that conversation would have went. And no, no, I'm not good with cutaways and all that, so I'm not showing you or anything. But jeez, guys, be careful what you say, especially the fact that it is a public place. Other people can hear you. It's it's not like you were like, okay, I don't know if they were whispering. Honestly, you could ta never tell in a strip because you can't tell the tone. But it didn't look like they were in any mood, any whispering mood, right? It looked like they were just talking out straight. And Ellie, I mean, Annie, maybe I understand. The other two, I you don't see enough, so you don't know. But really, Ellie... You feel bad about gossiping with just Annie, Elliot. Here you are, going all out of this to three, two other people besides Annie. Annie, well, Annie always gets it out of Ellie, right? She's a gossip person, and they, next to Connie, I think her and Annie were the closest, you know, out of the, the women area. So maybe I could sort of understand a little bit. And really, Eddie, again, we were just talking about you. I mean, I know it could have been anything. Like, oh, well, Connie late, but we were just talking about you? Yeah, the awkward. And with the, 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 the memo is when Connie gets there, zip. Right? If you're going to gossip, okay, you know what, as bad as it is, yes. But when she gets there, zip, don't tell her you were gossiping about her. Well, I'm sorry, I just... I, mean, I don't like people really gossiping about other people. I mean, if it's very positive, maybe a little bit, but I just, like, I would never really gossip behind someone's back. I mean, no, people do that, and I know, right? If I don't know them, well, it's their business. And if something happens bad because of it, it's their consequences. But I just feel that it's a pretty... How do I put it? Crummy thing to do. And I know people, when they were younger, might have done it a few odd times. And you know what? When you're like a teenager or very young, well, okay, it's bad, but they're learning. When you're all about in your 30s, almost 40s, you should at least have grown up a little bit to respect Connie's feelings. Okay, in a sense of the word, yes, Ted is a terrible person, and they're mostly saying how bad Ted is, but, like, for example, the line about sh her having rescue fantasies and her needing the one to be rescued. Really? <sighs> okay. Yes, Connie is in a very sensitive state. That's the thing, too. She's in a very sensitive state. She, she lost her first, she lost the love of her life. He never came back. Or never came with her. She lost her first husband, who, even though it was a terrible piece of crap, she was, you know, at that time, she was alone. And Ted, well, she feels she can't... I think Connie's in a state where she feels she can't do any better. Because her other experiences didn't end well. Which, thank God, later it does end well for her. Which I'm very happy for. I mean, I don't know who my favorite character is, and for better or for worse... Really, I can't really name them. Like, I don't really, I can't really think because there's a few that do come to mind. But, Connie, I think, is one of the strongest. Even though in some states she doesn't seem to show it. She's gone through a lot. And, and eventually, when she decides to move and change her life, she becomes a stronger woman by turning down Ted when he tries to get back with her again. And... I just think she has the most development. She is the most interesting and I think the strongest character. Yes, Ellie does a lot with her children. She has to go through a lot too. But she does have John by her side. Despite him being a little childish sometimes. For a long time it was just Connie and Lawrence. And she had to do good by him. And she still had a job and everything too. With all this. So, you know, in some ways Connie is actually my favorite character in the series. I mean, there's, as I said, I might go, I might, I might redo that, maybe someday make a video I'm talking about my favorite character if I decide I really know who it is, if it doesn't relate to this video, right? 
or my favorite characters of the series. Maybe it might be a list. I don't know. Someday, yeah. Someday I will think of that, but that's the word, someday. I have to get everything together, read more, and really decide who I think grew the most, who I really like. But guys, yeah, that was vlog number 47, and if you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel and like what you see, please subscribe, it helps this channel a lot, and don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll know when new videos are coming out. And I will see you guys in my next video.